Today the budget crawler becomes slightly more legal and gets a third brake light. And now we're going to deal with getting a third brake light on this thing because where I live it is very illegal not to have one and uh, I feel like I'm being asked to be pulled over uh, by not having one on top of uh, the other things that are not really legal with this Jeep. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that today. And these are the parts we're going to use to do it with. First off we've got this little round red light. This is just, uh, I believe it's a two inch uh, generic trailer light. Picked it up down at my local welding shop. And the plan with this is to mount it right inside of this wheel center cap right here that goes to the spare tire. And then we'll wire that into our uh, trailer hitch wiring. And then of course we have the key component to make this whole system work, the tail light converter. So your standard four pin trailer connector has four pins. One's going to be right turn signal, left turn signal, running lights, and ground. And unfortunately none of those four pins are a brake light. So that's where this thing comes in. It basically takes your, your right turn, your left turn, and your ground and converts it to a right turn stop and left turn all inside this magic black box. The factory wiring for the third brake light came out through the tailgate right where that piece of blue tape is. And uh, I considered running the wiring there for our new third brake light, but our new brake light's gonna be mounted to the swing out on the tire carrier. And there's just a lot of range of motion and uh, variable uh, distance that can be between the tailgate and the swing out at any point in time. So for me, the solution to this problem comes in this box. This is a pre-made uh, trailer wiring kit for the Jeep Wranglers. So basically, uh, it's a plug and play kit, so it utilizes factory plugs. Um, you just unplug a connector that's under the Jeep then this thing plugs in line with that connector and there's no need to cut, splice, or solder, uh, nothing like that. If there's one thing I hate doing on a vehicle, it is cutting into factory wiring. I will go to extremely great lengths not to cut or tap into factory wiring because that's just asking for problems down the road. Now this is what comes in the kit. So we've got the little uh, four prong connector there for the trailer and we've got the uh, thing that plugs in line. So one end goes into the in and one end goes into the out and uh, that's pretty much it and I assume we've got a ground here we need to attach somewhere but this should be a real straightforward install and this is how we're going to power our third brake light and besides that I need to pull a trailer later today so this really needs to be installed anyway so I got that harness installed pretty quickly a uh, nice simple install just plugs right in line with some of the wiring that's in the passenger side rear wheel well and then you gotta put a new screw in for a ground and that's about it we got to work on the wheel center cap, just drilled a hole right in the center there, then uh, kind of sanded it down with a flap disc on a drill. And everything popped together pretty nicely. So uh, all that was left now was to drill a hole for the wiring harness to go in. So uh, we can't feed it out the back since that mates right up against our new tire carrier. And after that, it was time to install the tail light converter. I think that's going to be our mounting location right there. That's got double-sided tape on the back, so we'll double-sided tape it, and then I'll put some zip ties around it to hold it in place, just in case the tape were to fail. We've got the wires running down that come to the four-pin connector, so I've got a pigtail that will uh, solder together right there. Or I actually got some new connectors that we're going to try out that are heat shrink with solder inside them, which seems super convenient, but I'm not sure uh, how good they're going to be, so we're going to give them a try on this. So these are the little things I'm using. It's basically a short sleeve of heat shrink tubing with some kind of solder material inside that melts when you hit it with a heat gun. So I haven't used these before. Um, I saw them somewhere else on the internet and uh, ordered them. Now in theory these seem like a fantastic uh, idea, but I am a little skeptical about how small of an amount of solder is in there. I don't know if it's the particular ones that I bought or if they're all like this. Uh, these are supposedly 3M brand. Uh, I bought them on eBay though, so who knows. Now it's adhesive line heat shrink with the solder material inside. Um, obviously, we always want to use adhesive line heat shrink anytime we're on an external application like this. And I generally use adhesive line heat shrink uh, exclusively unless I have something that I plan on tearing apart pretty soon. It's a little hard to see what exactly happened inside the heat shrink, but um, the solder did melt, it spread out, but I can still see a little bit of copper in there. So maybe I typically over solder joints when I solder them by hand, but 
Uh, to me, it just doesn't seem like there's enough solder in these connections. So like I said, maybe it's the brand that I bought. Uh, maybe they're not all like that, but I'm not totally satisfied with these. Um, I'll leave them on here and see how they do, but uh, for now, I think I'm just going to stick with regular solder and uh, adhesive line heat shrink after the solder. So here's our final product. Uh, we've got the four pin connector that connects into our trailer wiring harness. We've got the uh, two turn signal wires that come into the box and the ground that also comes into the box. And then we also had a running light wire that I just capped. Since we're not going to need that, I just put a piece of adhesive line heat shrink tubing over the end of it. You can see the uh, glue coming out of there. And this is just a totally waterproof uh, little cap that we got on there. We did the same thing on the uh, right and left turn signal wires coming out of the box, so we don't need those. And then uh, we've got the brake light wire coming up here. And then this little connector will go to our round brake light, which is mounted on the tire. So I could have just directly uh, soldered these and connected them right up to the, the wiring harness that was for the light. But I threw one of these weather pack connectors on here just to make removing the spare tire a little bit easier and less of a hassle. So a quick note on these weather pack connectors, uh, if you don't currently use them, you definitely should. These are great for exterior applications, they're waterproof connectors, um, and they're pretty easy to put together once you get the hang of it. If you don't want to actually build the connector, you can usually buy these things with wires, you know, a few inches of wire coming out of them and then just uh, solder and uh, heat shrink them onto your current wiring, but the better way to do it is to buy a little kit like this. So I've got all kinds of connectors, we've got one prong all the way up to six prong I think over here. And then uh, all these other pieces are things that make up these connectors. So we have the metal prongs that go inside these plastic housings, rubber seals, and then just the male and female ends of the connectors. So rather than attempting to film creating one of these, I'll just show you the instructions that come with the kit. Um, again, it's pretty simple. Uh, there's a slight learning curve to it, kind of figuring out how to get these things in the right position and get them crimped on. But once you figure that out, they're super easy to construct. And I don't know of a better DIY connector out there. And of course your typical four pin trailer connector is anything but waterproof. So we just slapped a little silicone paste on there to try to keep it from corroding. All right, not the best looking setup, but we got her done. So we got the wiring harness for the trailer coming in right here. Connects in, we've got our little converter there. It's uh, double sided taped and zip tied onto the carrier. And then we've got the wires coming out right here that connect into the weather pack connector. And come out the front side of the tire and go up into the center cap. Now let's make sure this thing actually works. And the absolute final product with the spare tire cover on there. And it's pretty clear why I went with the uglier cover that has the window in the middle of it. So let's come back at night and see how this looks in the dark. And there it is. Is it the brightest? Nope. But will it keep me from getting pulled over? Yes, it should. So what did we spend today? Well, uh, we bought the trailer harness, which I would have bought anyway, whether or not I was doing this mod. That was a little over 20 bucks. Tail light converter, which was necessary for this mod, uh, 2158. The red clearance light that we put in the wheel center cap, that was two bucks down at my local welding shop. Uh, that was a pretty good price. And obviously I had the center cap already from the tire, so that didn't cost anything. Then a few miscellaneous wiring supplies, the weather pack connector, uh, some lengths of wire, those little uh, heat shrink connectors, all that. I'm going to estimate it about five bucks. And then we got a tire cover to go over the whole thing. And uh, we've got the clear window in the middle, obviously, so that the light will be able to shine through. It was $13.52 over on Amazon. And that brings our total for the day up to $62.98. Now, like I said, some of this stuff would have been bought anyway, whether or not this mod happened. So I'd say specifically for this brake light mod, uh, we probably spent about $30. Uh, I would have bought a tire cover anyway, and I would have bought a trailer wiring harness anyway. So as usual, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.